We are in VirtualBox. Let's take a look and see how we can install a 2016 server. I'm actually running on a Windows 10 host, uh, but we're going to install a 2016 server on VirtualBox on our host. So we've got VirtualBox open. We'll go ahead and click New, and we'll just call this Windows 2016 Test, but we can rename it to anything we want. And you can see under the type is Windows, and the version, it says Windows 2016 64-bit. If you want, you can change that to a different version if you have it. So memory size, by default, it's going to go to 2048. I'm going to go to 4096. Now before I set that, I'm going to go to my task manager and just double check that I've got enough RAM here. So I'm going to go to performance, and I see my memory is at 15.7 or 16 gigabytes, and currently I'm only using 2.8 of those. So i got plenty to do 4 gigabytes of RAM. So I don't recommend you leave any less than, than at least 4 gigabytes of RAM on your host, otherwise your host won't work correctly. So we've got different options for creating a hard disk. I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a hard disk now and click Create. And another part of the uh, wizard pops up. Now it's going to default to a 50 gigabyte hard drive size. I'm going to go to 75 just because I know there's a lot of updates to Windows 2016. I can always add more hard drive space later if I need it. And I'm going to use the default virtual box disk image. You could also do a VHD or other options as well. But I'm going to go ahead and choose a VDI. Also, I'm going to choose dynamically allocated. I can do a fixed size. Now, a fixed size does uh, actually run faster than dynamically allocated. But if I don't end up using the entire 75 gigabytes, then I can save hard drive space by choosing dynamic. So we'll go ahead and click Create. And my Windows 2016 test is there. Let's go ahead and right click on this and choose Settings. We want to make a few setting changes before we start this thing up. Let's go to System and double check our memory is correct, still at 4 gigabytes. And I'm going to leave everything else the same, but if you have any trouble with your processor, where you start it up and you get an error, like a stop error, zero times something, go ahead and check this, enable PAENX, and then also uh, you can raise the amount of RAM that the video has, which I'll show you in just one second. But before that, I want to add some more CPUs. So I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, four CPUs, and you can, again, once again, go down to your um, task manager and go to performance, go to CPUs, and you can see how many uh, cores that you have. I have a total of four cores, so I'm going to give all four cores to this one particular server. And I can back off on that if it makes the, the uh, host run too slow. Let's go to where it says display, and this is where the video memory comes in. So sometimes you'll get an error starting up, uh, something about memory or another stop arrow error, and it says you need more video memory. So you can go ahead and give it more memory if you want to here. I don't recommend you go any more than, say, 256 because it's just not necessary. Uh, under storage, if I want to add an additional hard drive, I just click the plus button, and I'll choose to either add an IDE or SCSI controller uh, or a SAS controller. And I recommend that you go ahead and add the SAS controller. By default, there's only going to be a limited amount of IDEs. You can also add a SCSI, either a SCSI or a SAS. They'll both pretty much do the same thing. The SCSI, you can add the most amount of drives. Uh, SAS, you can add a little bit less. But either way, um, either one of those will work. I don't recommend you add the IDE control. You can see it adds by default a DVD, CD, DVD. And we're going to be adding that here in just a second. And I will go ahead and check the box so it's live. Uh, audio, just leave that on if you need it. And network, this is the real tricky part. By default, it's set to NAT, and that means you can go out to the Internet, which is great. Uh, if you choose you don't want to go out to, to uh, the Internet, then you want to change this to internal. Now, I'm going to be changing it to internal because I just want this to communicate with other virtual machines. I don't want it to go on the Internet. So this is just a test environment. So I will have to go in and assign an, an internal IP address for this. If you click on Advanced, you'll see that by default it chooses the Intel Pro 1000. If your network card doesn't come up and work uh, after you install this, then go ahead and come in and change this. And uh, you can change it to one of these other cards until you get it to work right for you. If you need to add a second network adapter, because you're going to be doing routing or NATing, then you can go ahead and click Adapter 2 and enable that at this time. 
and just make sure that it's attached to the internal or whatever type of network that you need. I'm just going to go with the one adapter at this point and we are good there. I'm going to leave everything else the way it is. Go ahead and click OK and now I'm going to double click on my Windows test to get it started. Now when it first comes up it's going to say hey you, there's nothing here to boot. So I'm going to go in and add the optical drive and I'm going to say hey we're going to be using an ISO to boot off of. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a disk image. Now if you put your um, DVD into your physical optical drive, your CD DVD, then choose that if you want. But I'm going to choose a an ISO file that I downloaded from Microsoft. And so this is a 2016 64-bit ISO file. Now I'll go back to my machine. I'll choose reset, reset, and now it's going to prompt me to boot off of the DVD. So I'll click capture. There we go. And now it's booting up. Now the mouse is going to get locked in sometimes. If that happens, just press the right control key and that will unlock it from the screen. All right, we'll go ahead and click next, click install. Now we have to put in the key if you have this type of license. If you have a demo version, you don't have to worry about it. All right, let's go ahead and put the key in. I'm gonna choose the desktop experience. Otherwise, you'll end up getting the command prompt version of the server. So this way you get the GUI version, which is what we want. And we'll go ahead and accept the license terms. You'll notice that the mouse moves a little slower when you go like this because you don't have the guest editions installed yet. After we install Windows, we can go ahead and go up to where it says Devices, choose Insert Guest Edition CD. Now that will replace the Windows 2016 CD DVD, so we don't, do, don't want to do that yet. So after it's installed, we'll do that, run the guest editions, and then it'll run much more smoothly. Installation has completed. We'll go ahead and start it up. Now it does prompt you to boot from the CD DVD. Just go ahead and skip that. Don't click any buttons. Just let it boot all the way into Windows. And that's how you install Windows Server 2016 in VirtualBox. Make sure you set up your networking and install the guest editions after it's powered up.